Hi everybody, Andrew Cuneo here. It's day one of Kamigawa coming out on Arena, and I wanted to bring you a deck tech. This deck tech is going to feature mono black control because it's got my pick for the best card in the set, Tribute to Hirobi. I made a video where I went over my top five cards in the set, and this came in at number one for me. This is a card that I got some feedback from people who said they didn't really actually think this was even going to be a good card at all. And the main reason that they thought that was they thought that people would be able to play kind of white-black sack decks where they would sack the rogues for their own advantage, so you would never get the rogues back. And beyond that, you would actually just be feeding their ability to sack things. And also there was concern that, you know, they would get rid of the tribute to Hirobi with Red of Oblivion before it could flip, sacking one of the rats you'd given them. Or they would vanishing verse it and you'd never be getting the rats back. Those, I would say, are valid concerns, but that's only one type of matchup. Also, it's not really clear to me that you're going to lose the game off of that kind of an exchange. That's definitely an exchange where you're getting the worst of it. But it's not such a horrible exchange that you're just going to concede and move on to the next game. I think that's something you can fight through. So if Tribute to Hirobi proves to be a great card in other matchups, I think you would just accept that it's not going to be at its best in a mirror match or against a, a white-black deck. So I'm still very excited to try this card. I've played with it some already, and I found it to be excellent in the matchups I've gotten. Let's go over the rest of the deck. So this is going to be a mono-black deck. The reason that it is mono-black is I want to test Invoke Despair. This card says an opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, they lose two life and you draw a card. Repeat that for an enchantment and a planeswalker. So this card, some of the times it's going to be your opponent loses six life. You draw three cards. Other times it's going to be they sacrifice three permanents. Very, very powerful card. To me, it seems kind of reminiscent of Cruel Ultimatum, which is a card that was good in standard 10 or 15 years ago. And people really were a big fan of at that point. The one caveat about, well, two caveats on this card. One is that, again, I think it's not going to be at its best if you're playing a, a mirror-type matchup where somebody has filled their deck with lots of things they were planning to sacrifice anyway because you're just not going to get a high-value permanent that often. Although, those decks are generally based around Sanguine Brushstroke and or Wedding Announcement, and if you get your opponent to have to sack that enchantment, you're actually getting a decent amount of value off of the card, assuming they, you know, they can't sack a planeswalker. So you're you're getting your card back and you're making them lose two, two life and you're getting some sort of creature off the board at least. Not gonna be a great card in that matchup, but I think in other matchups, it's potentially going to be an all-star. So I wanted to make sure that my deck was very good at casting that. That's why I'm playing mono black as opposed to black white. Uh, I've got a Loth in my deck. I've got blood on the snow. This is kind of an existing archetype. I did trim on the loss just to fit more Invoke Despairs because I wanted to try that card. Four City Stalker kind of soars. This card's really, really impressed me when people have played it against me. So I, I think it's, you know, pretty obvious inclusion here. Also, I think it's good with the next card we're going to talk about, Soul Transfer. So this is a new card. It's kind of like a Hero's Downfall, except it exiles. So it's Exile, Target, Creature, or Planeswalker. Or you can return a creature or planeswalker from your graveyard to your hand. Or if you have an artifact and enchantment, you can just choose to do both of those. So this is very much a grindy card. It is a sorcery. It does cost three mana for a removal spell, so it's not going to be at its best against fast aggressive decks. But against other mid-range decks where the game could be a little bit grindier, I think it's really going to be excellent. Important thing to note with it in this deck is that the Artifact and Enchantment Clause is pretty easy to meet. Sanguine Brushstroke does it on its own. City Stalker Connoisseur is going to give you an Artifact. Meetup Massacre and Tribute to Hirobi both give you enchantments. Deadly Dispute gives you an Artifact. Shambling Gas gives you an Artifact. The Spellbook of Cursebound Witch has Artifacts and Enchantments in it, so you can potentially get whichever one of those you need out of the Cursebound Witch Spellbook. So I think that this is pretty, this is just a, you know, overall solid spell. Like I said, this is a Sanguine Brushstroke deck. This is one of the most powerful cards that came out in Alchemy. And it's obviously right at home in this style of deck. 
This really isn't, I'm not breaking any new ground there. Two Meat Hook Massacres. I've got a mix of Meat Hook Massacres and Blood on the Snows. I wasn't really sure which one I was going to prefer, so I went for a mix. Uh, for Tribute to Herobies, like I said, that's kind of the impetus for me wanting to try out this deck, is I think Tribute to Herobie is going to be a substantial upgrade for it. Then we've got four Deadly Disputes, four Shambling Ghasts. Only three Cursebound Witches. Cursebound Witch is a card that kind of fell out of favor and was replaced by Eye Twitch for a while. I, that was mostly done because people wanted a creature that could block against opposing Dragon's decks. The Dragon's decks have kind of fallen off, so Cursebound Witch is, I think, in, you know, it, it's a much better card against decks that are going to be attacking you on the ground, just because the card you get from the spellbook is generally actually pretty good, and it also doesn't require to, you to use four or five slots in your sideboard to support the lessons for Eye Twitch. One copy of March of Wretched Sorrow. This is another new removal spell that I'm pretty excited about. This is black and X. You drain a creature or a planeswalker for X. So you deal X and you gain X. It has the option that you can exile black cards from your hand to reduce the cost by two. So if you wanted to, you know, drain something for four, you could play a black and exile two cards from your hand or you could pay a black plus two mana and exile one card from your hand, or you could just pay five mana. So it's very flexible in terms of how you're going to cast it. it. It's never super efficient in terms of resources, but what it does allow you to do is if you fall behind on board, if you stumble early on in the game, you're going to have more cards in your hand than you can really use. So this is a way that you can potentially start coming back for a single mana. So I think that this is actually going to lead to comebacks where it, a card like Infernal Grasp is never really going to be able to catch you up if you fall too far behind. Wretched Sorrow is never going to deal with more than one card, but it's going to give you turns where you can play two spells when you fall fell behind because you'll be able to play this for only one mana. So I think that's uh, that's pretty exciting. This card, I think you're always going to be happy having one or two copies in a deck like this. I don't think you're really going to want to play four copies. Because once you start playing four copies, you are going to want, you're going to wind up casting it for only mana a lot of the time. And it's not, it's not awful, but it's also not efficient to do that. So not a, not a card I would really want to play four of. Mana base, I've got 22 Snow-Covered Swamps, three Faceless Havens, and a Takanuma. The reason for playing so many snow-covered swamps and faceless havens is obviously to support blood on the snow. Also, I'm trying to cast a quad black card. Um, so you can't play very many non-black lands. I've only got three faceless havens rather than four for that reason. One Takanuma, I think this is kind of a free roll to include in a deck like this. This is probably the worst ability on any of the channel lands because it, it is four mana and it doesn't even affect the board at all. It's, you're just setting up for having a good play the next turn. So really, really inefficient, but kind of free on a land. One thing that's nice about playing a mana base like this is that there are going to be times people cast Town Razor Tyrant against me, and I've just got all basic lands in play. So that they're not even going to get any value off of the trigger. Which Town Razor Tyrant is one of the best cards, so having it be knocked down a peg a, a decent amount of the time is pretty nice. Moving on to the sideboard, we've got a lot of the usual suspects for a black deck, duresses and go blanks. That I think is pretty standard. Two Parasitic Grasps, which I'm a huge fan of this card. I think it's a really, really strong card against Red Green Werewolves, which I think is one of the better decks. So I'm happy to have those as opposed to like Infernal Grasps, something like that. This deck is a little bit weak at killing the larger dragons, but I just don't think that's that popular of a, of a archetype. Three Reckoner Bankbusters. This is another new card. This was my pick for the second best card in the set for Alchemy. I think it's a very strong sideboard card against control decks or slower decks. Uh, it, it's not a very good card against aggressive decks. Certainly not in this deck where it's not really very cruelable. Happy to try those in the sideboard. It's kind of an open question as to whether having stuff like this or having Sorin's or Lolth's is better. But I wanted to get some experience playing these in the sideboard, so that's why I've chosen to do that here. 
And then finally, one copy of Soul Transfer. Like I said before, this is a really good card in grinding matchups, not so good against fast decks, which is why I've chosen to only play two in the main deck and one in the sideboard. So this is going to be a way to kind of pivot and make the deck better in grindy games. So with that, let's go ahead and see the deck in action. Reasonable hand, a little bit light on lands, but if I draw a third land, I'm going to be in pretty good shape. I've also got the, I can get the treasure from the Shambling Ghast if I wind up desperate for some reason. Meadook Massacre is almost always great against anybody who would be putting Lunark Veteran in their deck. There was a danger that the Voice of the Blessed was going to outpace my Meadook Massacre, but now that I've drawn Deadly Dispute, I think that's no longer all that likely to be an issue. Paladin class, eh? Not gonna mess around. Seeing if I can bait them into playing more. That should be enough to win the game. Two four Dawnbringer cleric, destroying my meat hook massacre. Okay. <laughs> Index sanctify. Sure. Wonder what was going through my opponent's head when they decided they needed to have a sanctify in their main deck. What is this hollow priest? Actually, I like this card. The, the opponents played a lot of cards that aren't very good, but I think this card is a pretty good card. Suppose I should have played the brush strokes. I missed out on two blood artist triggers from them chump blocking. Authority of the consoles. This is the card they got from the faith the faithful disciple. And I think they're probably just out on board.
Well, as we saw, the opponent is just playing a creature deck. So I want my sweepers. Maybe I don't need Lolf. They did have enchantments that I could make them sack. Maybe this is a good card. Maybe I'll just get the Wretched March. This is the kind of matchup where I, I don't really think you're very likely to lose no matter what you do. All right, a turn two tribute to Hirobi. We're going to get to see it in action. It says, if you would gain a life, you gain an additional life. Okay. Have a rat. It's not just a rat. It's a rat rogue. Although the artwork makes it look more like a panther to me. Another rat. So I haven't gotten to see what creature they've been buffing up with the Angel of Unity. I think I just want to land. So if I want to, I can just wipe the entire board. Or I could attack with everything and see maybe they'll have the voice of the blessed block. By attack with everything. <laughs> it's the curse bound witch and the echo of death's whale. That's everything in my world. I think again, I'm just going to Meat Hook Massacre. It, there's kind of no route for them to win. Assuming I don't let the Voice of the Blessed get out of hand. Wow, look at this combo. I'm going to put Trespasser's Curse on them and then start giving them rats with Tribute to Hirobi. That is, that is great synergy. You just played an Impassioned Orator. I do not wish to have a Cursebound Witch on the top of my deck. I guess the Impassioned Orator does make me not want to... play the, uh, the tribute to Hirobi so much. I'm 
just going to make sure I have enough mana to cast Blood on the Snow. It doesn't really feel like much can go wrong from there. Suppose I didn't need to attack with City Stalker Connoisseur. like to be able to give you guys more competitive matches than this, but this is just honestly the pairing I got. This is what Arena views as a proper pairing. This glorious anthem. This is a card from the Faithful Disciples spellbook. What's this card? This is a new card. All right. This is what we've been waiting for. Trespassers curse you. Have a rat. Have another rat. Oh no, they, they undid the, the curse with the impassioned orator. They have drawn a lot of copies of Voice of the Blessed every game, and it is their best card, at least against me. I'm going to get Soul Transfer it next turn, because it is going to be really big because of the tributes to Hirobi. No need to block these. I'm about to regain control of them. We will exile this voice of the blessed and get back a blood artist, which is excellent. This is not a keepable hand. No, my I, two lands that give me some value. This this just isn't even a castable spell. All right. I like this hand. I think I'm going to bottom the soul transfer. Soul transfer is pretty weak if I don't even have a creature that I'd potentially be getting back. I would have bottomed the blood on the snow, but I'm getting a blood from Sanguine Brushstroke, so if it turns out that I get pinched on lands, I can just Discard the blood on the snow. How am I playing against the same thing again? Give me those rats. Rats, please. So a little bit of not great synergy, the fact that soul transfer exiles, so you don't trigger the blood artist. But I think in general, you want exiling effects more in standard 
slash alchemy now because of the the new mythic dragons that have the the dies trigger, which I don't know how play how much play they were actually going to see, but if they're seeing if they're seeing any play, exiling is certainly going to be good. I guess I need to set up to probably blood on the snow now. One other non-great synergy here is that a tribute to Hirobi will be an enchantment in the graveyard. I will be getting a Blood Artist back. Can this sack to itself? No, it cannot. This is a different person. How did I find two people that are both playing Impassioned Orator Cleric class decks? Now this is whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Something's coming back. It's a cleric of life bond. Why didn't they get back aura? It used to be that you would gain a life when you did that. Not anymore. All right, let's invoke some despair. Killing a cleric's class, a cleric of life's bond. Making them lose two life, and I draw a card. Seems reasonable. I didn't actually even mistap my mana. I ran out of black. I guess I drew all three of the Faceless Havens in my deck, which is kind of unusual to have happened. We'll lead on this in case they have something in their hand that would be able to kill a creature when it attacks. It was murder. It was murder most foul.
I'm going to keep adding lands to the board. Just because I have two Faceless Havens that I could sink mana into. If it ever comes to it, which it's not going to, obviously. What do you got for me, Spellbook? Oh, Cruel Reality. I love that card. Look at this new fish pet they've got. That actually looks pretty good. It's like a fish hologram. I haven't gotten the new uh, board yet. I do like the new board as well. Whoa, those sleeves were crazy. What? What's going on over there? The discard Valkyrie Harbinger. This is a very cool card. I tried to make this work a few times. Never had great success with it. So I could attack them with the Connoisseur and then just play another Connoisseur and take their last card. Or I could soul transfer the Angel of Destiny. I think I'm just going to play another Connoisseur to get their last card. Oh, were they trying to do a Book of Exalted Deeds combo? Or maybe they were just trying to play this card fair. This is going to be a little bit nice. I do have my removal exiles. So I'll be able to get rid of this angel without allowing them to bring back a cleric of life's bond. I could go for some cruel, cruel reality. I also could have gone for another land there. I think we're going to have to slow things down a little bit.
So I can drain them for four with the blood tokens. And there's also these blood artist triggers. What do they got in the graveyard? They have a cleric of life bond. It's not going to be enough. We are going to have a lot of triggers here. What do you got for me? I'll take another City Stalker kind of sore. Thirteen triggers to spare. No, this is not a good hand. I say no to that one. It's a much better hand. What card should I bottom? The thing about Deadly Dispute is once you cast the first one, the second one is also castable. I guess I'm going to be greedy and just bottom soul transfer and just hope I draw a... Brush stroke or a shambling ghast, or I also could have drawn a curse bomb witch. Tribute to Hirobi will work as well, probably. Be a little bit slower. How sad is it going to be if? They have a turn four town raiser tyrant and it only has a target because of this Takanuma. <laughs> so this is the way tribute to Harobi works a lot of the time. It, it's going to be you lose three life getting it into play. Or, or getting it to flip. I wonder if they had a removal spell that they just didn't use there. It's weird that this game has started with them just going nothing, nothing, nothing. Their, their lands were a little bit awkward, I suppose, but you would think they would have at least been able to play something by turn three. Maybe their the removal spell is Igneous Inspiration. Also, look at this. Is it a Town Raiser Tyrant into all basics? We don't know if they have the Town Raiser Tyrant, but I'd like to think that I just, I just dodged a Town Raiser Tyrant thing with my stack of basic swamps. That was a spot where it was actually nice the way that the, the tribute to Hirobi worked because I, they didn't, I didn't have a creature in play for them to target with their removal until I wound up being untapped.
guess I should play Takanuma now. Maybe I should add, maybe I should just crack the blood and see if I can hit another basic. So I do I do think that Town Razor Tyrant's a card that's fairly likely to be in their hand right now. And I don't really want to commit myself to either losing two life a turn or sacrificing my fifth land. Also, looting the Shambling Gast away gives me a creature to get back with the Soul Transfer. Which, Shambling Gast is not a like a high-impact card to get, but every little bit does add up. I think I should maybe just loot away the Takanuma with the Blood Token. I certainly want to loot away a land, and I think I want to play a land this turn, and there's no reason to put my first non-basic into play if I don't have to. I could play this just to bring back a creature, but the creatures in my graveyard are, are so bad. And obviously, they're, I don't think their red-black deck is going to win a game without ever casting a creature. So I'm going to get a target eventually. They just played Malakir Rebirth. Odd. Okay. This is a pretty popular deck, this red black deck. Yeah, whatever. You abraded my treasure. And I do really like the Bloodthirsty Adversary in it. This is a that's a pretty cool bit of technology to whoever came up with it. Came up with. That's blood on the snow. I'd rather have the Curse-Bound Witch be dead than be alive. Let's just get another Blood Artist. And a Cruel Reality for next turn. I imagine that'll probably prompt the concession from them. It's only a 2-2. Two -two. This does not kill them. It would make them sack a creature and go down to 4. Or go down to 2, rather. It would deal 4. So one interesting question is, do I want Reckon or Bank Buster in this matchup? It is kind of a slow, grindy matchup, but they also had a Braids in their deck. The answer on that one's going to be I don't really want it. Kill blanks could be good. 
Actually, you know what? Let's experience playing with Reckon or Bankbuster and just see. Try two of them. Just be full on grindy. The go blanks are, are in my deck because they're good against the adversary. Cuts down their options on things to flash back. Also, it just taxes their resources so they don't get to the point where they have eight mana in play. And they're able to kick it twice. Well, I do like the opponent's deck. Malakir Rebirth is not a typical choice to include and is also not a good inclusion. Yet again, I've managed to dodge having a basic land in, or having a non-basic in play the turn that they would presumably like to be able to cast. Downraiser Tyrant. Ooh, Exile. Hmm. So if I want to continue my plan of trying to play around Downraiser Tyrant, I would have to not play a land this turn. Or I could Deadly Dispute away the blood and hope to find a land. Or I could discard a card and hope to find a land. Uh, I think I can just... I'm just going to fight through a Townraiser Tyrant and just not worry about it. If they play one next turn, I will just pay the, four li or I'll pay the two life and just play Invoke Despair. To get rid of it. The first go blank probably isn't that big of a deal. The second one I think is going to be pretty miserable for them. Hmm. I don't have a ton of stuff that's good against them having a creature land. The way I've sideboarded. So that was they lose six. And how are they still at 22? How'd they gain life? Oh, environmental sciences. Could have some Field of Ruins in my deck. But that would make me more vulnerable to Town Razor Tyrant for sure. They had had enough. They invoked Despair's truly invoked Despair. That's going to do it for me for today. Hope you guys found the deck tech interesting. Obviously, the at least the first two matches I got were not particularly good competitive matches. Uh, but th the third match, it was that was against a normal archetype, and deck performed well. I'll be posting more deck techs for cards with or for decks with Kamigawa cards in the coming days, and I'll probably eventually circle back to this deck. At least if I think it's maintains its position as being one of the strongest decks. I'll, I'll definitely do another video once I've tightened the build down a little bit. This is still a just trying a variety of things kind of phase. But so far, all the Kamigawa cards I've tried in this deck have seemed reasonably impressive to me. Certainly Invoke Despair looked great that last game, and Tribute to Hirobi seemed pretty strong in the games as well. So if you enjoyed the deck, please subscribe to the channel, and you'll get more deck decks like this. Talk to you guys later.